Hi, my name is Glenn Weinrib, and today we're going to look at how to solve the climate problem with a surge in research and development. Occasionally, R&D is used to solve a problem. For example, in 1961, President Kennedy stated he wanted a man on the moon by the end of the decade. In response, a program was set up and funded. In theory, a so-called moonshot like this could be initiated for climate change. But what might be developed and how much might it cost? Well, that's what we're going to look at today. Before we begin, we're going to define several terms. We define climate moonshot as conducting R&D to the extent required to solve the entire climate problem. And we define solving the problem as preventing the collapse of sea ice, preventing the collapse of ocean currents, preventing the collapse of the West Antarctic ice sheet, and bending the global warming curve so that the Earth's temperature peaks and then drops back down. To achieve all of these objectives, our moonshot does two things. One, it does R&D to drive down the cost of 24-7 green energy to below that of fossil fuel. And two, it does R&D to determine how to reflect sunlight back into outer space to cool the planet and offset global warming. Obviously, we would want to do this at a reasonable cost and without harm. It is worth noting many people are nervous about reflecting. Also, to prevent runaway climate change, we probably need to reflect approximately 1% of sunlight within 15 years near the North and South Poles. And in theory, this can be done by spraying gases with reflective properties into the upper atmosphere. But how much might this cost? Well, according to one study, reflecting might cost tens of billions of dollars annually. This might seem expensive. However, it might be the lowest cost way to prevent runaway climate change. An R&D moonshot would probably be funded by people who want to use their money to save the planet from climate change, as opposed to investors who seek a financial return. Planet saving and investing differ in multiple ways. Candidates for moonshot sponsorship include high net worth individuals, foundations, and governments. In theory, sponsors could require produced materials be placed on the internet for open review. Open source often saves time and money since it reduces inaccurate claims. When doing R&D, small money is spent before medium money and medium before large. For example, within a moonshot initiative, $1 million might support proposal writing, $10 million might support doing detailed design work, and $100 million might support building prototypes. Ultimately, we need to think about how to spend billions of dollars to save trillions. And for no money, one person or one group of people can design a moonshot program by putting together a list of things to develop. In other words, they can focus on the following question. What is a list of things that, if developed, solve the entire climate problem? For an example list, click on the link in the description below. It is possible, perhaps probable, a climate moonshot is the only way to solve the climate problem. For a video that explores this concept, visit the link shown here. We're now going to examine an example moonshot program. This is not being done, however, it could be done. Our example costs $10 billion over five years. And it divides the climate problem into 10 different research areas with roughly $1 billion devoted to each. 
The initial phase costs $10 million, and it supports writing proposals, designing machines, and developing experiments. Now let's review the 10 research areas one at a time. We need to calculate how much sunlight needs to be reflected and from where and when. And to do this, we need better climate models. And to get these, we need to conduct experiments on clouds, and we need to measure how much sunlight reflects off air pollution. For details on clouds, visit the link shown here. And for details on pollution, see video number eight. Sulfur occurs naturally in coal and oil and is therefore emitted into the atmosphere when these fuels are burnt. In principle, it could be extracted before combustion, moved to an airplane, and emitted into the upper atmosphere instead of being emitted at ground level. Sulfur in the upper atmosphere stays aloft for one to two years, while sulfur emitted at low altitudes typically stays aloft for only hours to days. Also, sunlight reflects off sulfur. Therefore, changing the emission site reduces the planet's temperature while not increasing total sulfur emissions. To better understand this, we need to develop airplanes that emit material into the upper atmosphere and then monitor that material for days to weeks. For details, see videos 6 through 10. To control global warming, we probably need large airplanes that can transport 100 tons of material every several hours. And to do this at a reasonable cost, we probably need a system that supports automated flying, automated refueling, and automated reloading. And we probably need 100 to 200 of these automated airplanes. But before we build hundreds of planes, we need to build one. In other words, we need to design and prototype an automated system that supports one large spray plane. Okay, so the first $3 billion of R&D sets us up to reflect sunlight. Eventually, future leaders would need to compare reflecting with not reflecting. Also, we have a carbon dioxide emissions problem. And to transition to a green economy, we need to reduce the cost of 24-7 green energy to below that of fossil fuel. Fortunately, this is easy. We just need to automate the construction of nuclear power plants. More specifically, we need to develop custom machines that build these sites. And this would cost little compared to the cost of a nuclear power plant. For details, see videos 11 through 13. To make chemicals without emitting carbon dioxide at a cost less than the traditional approach, we need to co-locate chemical processing equipment with low-cost nuclear reactors. More specifically, we need to develop standards that define how this fits together and to reduce the cost of processing equipment we need to develop a transportation system that moves large platforms of chemical processing equipment from a shipyard or factory to a nuclear power site. For details, see video number 11. There are primarily two types of nuclear power, fission and fusion. Fission is the traditional form that generates electricity with uranium fuel. However, this is not popular due to meltdown risk, nuclear waste, proliferation risk, and cost. Fusion, on the other hand, does not have these issues. However, it is still in development. In theory, we can accelerate this development with a surge in funding. For details, see video number 14. In theory, we can reduce the cost of solar power by developing a technique for placing solar material directly onto soil. For details, see video number 17. 
In a green new world, we need more standards that define how things fit together mechanically, electrically, and with communication. This includes standards for devices in automated buildings, standards for swappable EV batteries, and standards for ships powered by liquid ammonia. For details, visit the links shown here. To extract underground geothermal energy at a low cost, we need vertical tunnel boring machines that operate at high temperatures. For details, visit the link shown here. In theory, we can build a website that creates climate plans based on requirements specified by the website user. This would allow policymakers and concerned citizens to get a better sense of how to fix climate at the lowest cost. For details, see climate videos four and five. A surge of R&D in key areas can probably solve the climate problem, and it can get started for roughly $10 million. Yet most importantly, a path forward exists, and it is not blocked by politics or financial constraints. Okay, that's it for me, and I'll talk to y'all real soon.